Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. This is screencast number five, our second last screencast for the top, uh, Unit 3 VCA Physics topic, Structures and Materials. This is the elective topic, the third topic for uh, Unit 3, the last topic for Unit 3. So we're closing in, not far to go. All right. Okay, so before we go any further, let's just quickly recall what we looked at in the previous screencast. Now, stress-strain graphs, um, they have an elastic region, that's the linear region. They have a plastic region, that's where it's uh, past the point of no return or past the elastic limit, and will no longer go back to its original shape. In the linear region, we had the gradient measuring the stiffness, and we call that Young's modulus. Or you can calculate that by either finding the gradient or doing stress divided by strain. The other thing was brittle objects have no plastic region and they will just smash. Ductile objects have a large plastic region and they will be able to be stretched. Okay, so energy. We stretch an object or compress an object, we're doing work on that object. So we're storing energy there. So we, we call this energy strain energy. And because we're applying a force, we're moving at a distance, there is work that's being done. Because it's an energy, we have uh, units of joules. So let's sort of have a bit of a closer look at that in terms of the stress-strain graph. Now, work done because we changed the length. Now, if you want to calculate this from the graph, directly from a stress-strain graph, the area under the graph gives you the strain energy per unit volume. Now the reason for this is that uh, the stress strain graph is independent of the dimensions of the material that you're using. So if you want to actually calculate the entire amount of energy, then you need to multiply that area under the graph by the volume of the material. So let's have a look at this. Here's a typical stress strain graph. The area under the graph gives you the strain energy per unit volume, so it's joules per meter cubed. So if we were asked to find the energy, you'd have to multiply that by the uh, dimensions of the object or the volume of the object to find the actual energy. Now if we're calculating the area under the graph, if there's a plastic region, we tend to just go with counting squares. So you obviously count up all the ones that are whole, uh, count up all the halves, add those on, and here you would estimate what fraction of a square that you've got. So you'd, you'd have a bit of give or take in the answer so that they sort of have a region of values that they would accept here. So let's uh, now go on and have a look at an example. We've got a glass rod. It's compressed and it has a strain of 0.05 percent, percent being key here. You're going to have to convert that back to a decimal. So divide by 100. So triple o five or point triple o five and we're also given dimensions of the rod so the first question is determine the strain energy so we have area under the graph so we've got a triangle so it'd be half base times height so half point triple o five times three and then multiply that by the volume so half times the strain times the stress Okay, don't forget to look at the units in your graph and then multiply by the dimensions of the rod. It was 20 centimetres, so it needs to be in metres, times pi r squared. Okay, 5 millimetres because it was a 1 centimetre diameter. Again, questions just keep coming up with it in diameter, so please be aware of that when you're doing your questions. Okay, so that gives us about 0 0.1178 joules. If the compressive force is removed, will it return to its original length? We're still in the elastic area, so you remove that force, it should go back to its original length. So that's really just a yes-no question. So let's have a look at an example that undergoes plastic deformation. So the question here, we're given dimensions of the object, we're given the tensile force and hence the shaded region. So the questions, so we're just going to list those variables there. How much of the has the wire stretched by? Huh. 
something tells me we're going to need to look at the strain. We know the original length, we know the strain. So substituting in, rearranging, so 1.5 times the 6 times 10 to the negative 3, we get 9 times 10 to the negative 3 metres. That's 9 millimetres. So we've got a stretch of 9 millimetres or almost a centre, centimetre. Okay, second question says determine the strain energy stored in the wire. So here we actually want to just look at the amount of energy per unit volume. So we're just effectively finding the area under the graph. So we need to count up the number of squares. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 and a half, not quite 15. So, you know, roughly 15.75. So we've got about 15.75 squares. We multiply that by the unit of the square or the height of the square, which is 2 times 10 to the 8. And then multiply that by the unit of the uh, horizontal values for the squares, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 3. So that gives us, uh, what have we got, 3.15 megajoules per meter cubed. And I haven't put units in again. I'm going to get myself in trouble. All right. So the actual energy now would be the area times 1.5 times 8 times 10 to the negative 7. That's the length and then the cross-sectional area. So we actually work out in total it has 3.78 joules of energy or strain energy. Now, will the wire return to its original length if it is removed? Well, given that it's gone into the plastic region, you'd say definitely not. Um, there, is, there is no way. It's past the elastic limit, so it won't return. Some of that energy has been lost. Okay, another definition is toughness. This is the amount of energy that a material can absorb before it's going to fail. So if you want to get an indication of toughness, remember stiffness was the gradient. The greater the gradient, the, the greater the stiffness. We had strength, that was the tallest part, you know, the one that could take the most stress. Now toughness is the one that can absorb the most energy. So therefore, if you have a greater area under the graph, you have a tougher material. And, you know, when we think about it, those that undergo plastic behavior are going to produce a larger area under the graph, so those are going to be tougher. Typically, metals are tough, brittle materials aren't. Okay, let's have a look at an example here. We have a stress-strain relationship. We've got a metallic rod. It fractures at point Y, elastic limit at point X, and we're given the volume. Okay, so let's just have a look at a couple of questions relating to this this graph. So, listing my variable that I've been given, which is the volume of the material, and keeping the graph at hand, uh, what's the value of Young's modulus for this rod? Uh, so, Young's modulus, we calculate by the gradient. So, gradient is rise over run. We have 2 times 10 to the 8. Don't forget to look at the units here and the units there. And that gives us Young's modulus of 2 times 10 to the 11, and that's newtons per meter squared. What's the tensile strength? So strength is the maximum amount of stress before failure. Failure occurs at about 6 times 10 to the 8 newtons per meter squared. How much energy per cubic meter? So notice here, per unit volume. So that's just the area under the graph, and that is it. No, no further calculation for this question. So area, one square times the unit. So the the units multiply the find the area of one square. One times ten to the eight, point five times ten to the negative three, and then count up the number of squares. So count all the individual squares, and then estimate the number of squares you've got in that component there. So you can kind of roughly say that's close to about one, 
that's probably could be split up and fill those gaps close to about two. So it, it is a bit of a guesstimation as to the actual value. And so we get about uh, what's that? 1.6 megajoules per meter cubed. Okay, and last question. Calculate the strain energy required to break the rod. Okay, so we know the strain energy per meter cubed, so multiply by the volume, and that'll give us the strain energy required, and that's about 80 joules of energy, and you can then call us failure.